Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I'm going to do a grimoire tour um, slash flip through. Uh, I wanted to do, I wanted, I've been wanting to do one of these for a, a while now. So finally feeling better after being sick for like two weeks straight was just, I mean, I feel so much better so I'm very grateful for that. Um, but it was, oh my goodness, it wiped me and my partner out just we were just exhausted and we kind of feel like we're recovering sleep wise as well like we're tired from being exhausted from being sick I guess I hope that makes sense but anyway so I wanted to do something um, a little bit more fun um, laid back just sort of chill for you know another video uh, to put on YouTube um, after being sick and I always love watching um, like grimoire flip throughs on YouTube. They um, they really, I guess, fanned the flame. They didn't really spark anything. Well, okay, I'm digging myself a hole here. They, um, while it wasn't the inspiration for my craft, it definitely, like I said, fanned the flame and deepened my love for witchcraft and paganism and there are a few grimoire tours on youtube that i just absolutely love i constantly rewatch them um a couple of them the 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 channel the person who runs it they they just don't upload anymore they just stopped uploading and there was no update on anything like that and uh, but I'm very grateful that their videos are still up because they give me so much inspiration and they they provide me a sort of like kickstart when I I when I'm having trouble finding the love for the craft because it's I don't know it sort of just like reminds me of I guess the vastness of the craft like how much I can really do and how much I can feel and how much love goes into um, building a spiritual practice for myself so I wanted to put my own little grimoire tour on YouTube. So this book right here is the grimoire I'm working in right now. Um, and I say right now because um, I move around in my books a lot. Um, sometimes it's dependent on style. So I have a sort of like art grimoire thing that um, I put a lot more of my like watercolor sketches and scrapbooking type stuff into um, but and that and those are like more like finished spells like spells I've actually like done so the art itself is a spell versus like what's in here is a walkthrough of spells or uh, spell ingredients or stuff like that um, where it's very I guess instruction manual type uh, versus the art grimoire which is you know an actual like book of spells um, which I'm not going to show that one just because I feel like first of all this would be more interesting and I just I don't know I don't vibe with the idea of sharing the book of spells. Maybe it's just because it's a personal thing. Um, so I will link the Etsy shop that made this grimoire because uh, that's where I got it. I got it from an Etsy shop and they're US based. I'm not sure if they ship worldwide or not, uh, but they, they make quality work. Um, I've gotten another grimoire from them before and I mean, they're just beautiful. They're phenomenal. Um, and they recently um, put up new products on there. So there should be new um, books on there. They haven't sold out. They only do a few at a time. So 
you know, but they're quality for sure. Um, now when I got it, it came with a lock, but until I'm done, I'm just going to leave it open and then I'll probably buy a, um, a stronger lock. Cause as you can see, like it, it wasn't like so wide before I started working in it and obviously you know I'm not done with it so it's going to get even bigger so yeah so this is the cover nice black the snake I love serpent imagery I absolutely love it um and this one just this one just spoke to me and on the inside is this nice like gold I don't know if it's like I don't know if it's leather or not like faux leather but with like gold leaf on the top I'm not really too sure but it feels amazing and the first page is just a dedication to the book I don't even really know what it says <laughs> I kind of forgot um, so the first page here is some alchemical imagery this is something that I painted and drew um, and I have a thing about spirals and eyes I just I love them so the first little like spell thing we have here is my main working candle um like sort of ritual and like how I prepare it and these are sigils that I crafted myself so these are all specific sigils that are based off of a system that I created a sigil making system okay so over here is like my my dedication my sort of honoring the first um, sort of deity spirit guide type of spirit that um, entered, you know, my sphere of consciousness, my sort of, my, it just came to the forefront of my spiritual, like, practice initially. Um, it, I call it the spiral eye, and he doesn't say anything. He just shows up when I need to pay attention, when I need to pay attention to other signs or when I've been ignoring maybe another spirit um, or a deity and it or anything related to like anything related to like my mundane life as well it um <clears throat> sorry about that I had to cough and I didn't want to like do that directly into the my phone's mic you know anyway so the the spiral eye he shows up when whenever I need to be paying attention to a specific thing and it's always good for me to do divination immediately after like seeing a like a vision or um and I say vision like it's just like something like when he pops into my mind um because it's very it's a very specific image in my head it's a very specific spiral eye and when I just randomly think of him I know okay there's something that's I'm not seeing here I need to pay attention what have I forgotten um you know what's today is today a full moon sort of thing you know just go through all the you know the checklist there um he's not around as much anymore um as my practice has developed although um, the imagery of the eye and the spiral is still very important. And this right here is a little sketch I did um, dedicated to Bridget uh, because she was the first deity that really presented themselves to me. And um, she, she was so many things to me. She was um, a creative power for me, a creative powerhouse. Um, and she definitely got my creative skills, I guess, going. Like, 
I always had an interest in painting and poetry and you know just all of the arts and stuff like that but I never really was motivated or encouraged to really investigate those things um maybe as like a profitable thing like how to make money off of it but I never really explored it as something that it could be just you know for me um and it was a very spiritually connected moment to realize that this is actually really good for you know my mental health like this is, really helps me feel happier and more whole with myself and has provided a whole new I guess what's the word I'm looking for a new perspective on life okay so this is about the singing bowl that I have and using sound uh, to cleanse or raise energy If you get a good look at that okay uh, so this is a process I think it explains how I make my prayer beads and this is kind of like the Hail Mary um, I have what's right here is is covered because it's my it's my system for how to make sigils and I didn't really feel comfortable sharing that it's right here oh you know what this is not a page that, can, that needs to be covered okay so um, yeah I just didn't want to explain or show the specific way that I do it um, and so this is a ritual for the Morgan and this is some dedication imagery that I made for her and you um, if you're wondering why these look familiar but they're not quite right it's because this is my variation of the Theban script so I modified it to fit um, my craft in a way that visually in a way that made sense for me uh, because the Theban script originally has some like pointier more um like corner based imagery if I th that makes sense like they have some some symbols that have more that aren't as flush like aren't round on the ends they're like pointed like triangles and stuff like that you know um they don't to me they don't look like letters and so it just to make it look more flush for myself and um, I spent a lot of time thinking about how I wanted to do it and crafted my own version of the Theban script so yeah it's it was a whole it was a whole thing but I'm happy that I did it so this is some more information on the Morgan and this is a dedication page um, my partner has a friend who is able to like take care of different birds and stuff like that different animals i'm not too sure where they work like i don't know if it's like a sanctuary or a rescue like for um, all sorts of animals and stuff but um i just can't think of it at the moment i'm sure my partner's told me but i just forgot um anyway this is something that they brought and it's um, a crow feather and if you're seeing like writing in the background some of this was like journal entries and I kind of felt like putting things over it because I was never going to read some of these journal entries I, I can't read some of my handwriting from that time or whenever I was writing those original journal entries um, so I just covered them up. Okay, and so this is some Hestia information. I don't know if you can see it all that well. 
Um, but these are, this is some information. And this right here is just like some breakdown of um, like Juniper and Rue and just a little bit of some information. I plan on doing some more like herbal grimoire stuff later. Um, but yeah, um, as you can tell, like a lot of my grimoire is like layered. Just like all sorts of stuff everywhere. <laughs> so this is a prayer that I... I made for you know running my fingers over the beads um, uh, it looks well I don't know it looks like a decent amount of writing but it's not like for a prayer uh, but when you're saying it it's I mean it it goes by pretty fast um, so this is some more Hestia information Kind of made that like really close to like the edge here. I hope it doesn't ever fold. It's very awkward because like my camera is like right, my my phone camera is just right in front of me. It's just my phone. It's not a phone camera. Anyway. Um. So this is some Bridget stuff. Some Bridget information, associations, and stuff. So and. I like to um, sew stuff in. I've always liked that. And this um, this fabric I got had like a bunch of like Christian sayings and um, scriptures like Psalm, what is that? 119.105. So yeah. Um, and so this is some, this is an honoring Bridget ritual. Some information, some sigils. And I leave a lot of space like here, like this for extra stuff I'm gonna write in later. Um, and I try to leave some room on the edges as well in case I wanna glue in like a flap over something that has extra information. Um, I'm not done with this symbols area. Um, I plan on doing a lot to this page. Um, underneath has some names of certain symbols that are important to me. Okay, yeah, so this is just like me explaining some symbols that were very important to me initially in my craft. Um, I think underneath here is like a poem or something. Yeah. Okay, and then this is some more fabric. I just, I really love the way this feels and the way, like, it, it just covers some, like, information. Um, and also, the way this, like, weighs down this side so it can lay a little bit flatter when I have it open. It doesn't look like it can lay that flat, but when it's laying down, it, it's, uh, it's okay. If I have the clips on it, it'll stay in place pretty well. So this is, um some information about Saturn. I have things all over the place, so they'll be like full. I'll have all like the seven planetary intelligences. I know that they're, I know that, you know, the sun and the moon aren't obviously not planets, but um, I use their more like alchemical imagery um, in my craft a lot. And so I'm gonna have um, a, like a paper, a page like this dedicated to all of them. Now this is a shadow working ritual that um, helps with integration um, of the shadow so that you can have some relief from the shadow and its, its habits. So this is some information about the Archangel Jophiel. Sigils. The 
evil eye. You know, I actually found it very hard to find detailed um, information about the evil eye talisman um, in books. I don't know why, but it it was it wasn't all that clear to me because um, I was trying to find a specific name in um, for the the evil eye talisman and. I found that uh, a name that gets used is Nazar, N-A-Z-A-R, and I don't really know if that's accurate or not, if like that's the name of the talisman itself, because the evil eye is obviously the thing the talisman is protecting you from, so I just wanted to know what the name of the talisman was, if there was one, um, and I, I feel like the it was inconclusive. So sometimes I'll have blank pages here because I feel like, you know, I don't, I don't want to work with them yet. Um, and so over here is a page from another grimoire I put in here because it had the sigils for the elements. And this is like a home blessing thing. Some Baba Yaga information. Um, I work with her a lot with um, when it comes to black mirror scrying. So this is the 13 witches runes. Um, I plan on doing a page um, dedicated to sodalite um, because sodalite is one of my favorite crystals of all time. Um, I have like two sort of like palm stone uh, pieces that I just absolutely love holding in my hands before doing any sort of divination work or spellcraft. Some more uh, Morgan stuff. I work with the Morgan a lot with shadow work, doing shadow work, and I mean it's been. She's tough with me, but it's also been incredibly healing and incredibly loving. And yeah, it's been, it's been a journey. Okay. So you're kind of at the end of like where I'm at. I have so much information I need to put in here. Um, but yeah, let me know if you want uh, to see more of more of these. Because I want to do a page for um, at least one page for all of the spirits that I work with. Um, and I want to do a spread dedicated to uh, my main herbal allies and my favorite crystals. You know things that are personal to my craft so not just like a list of like all the herbs I can possibly put in there um, just the things that are really really important to my craft and um, but yeah it's been a real labor of love working in this uh, grimoire uh, because you know with the symbols right with the Theban script the modified Theban script it's um, you know it, it's I don't want to say it's learning another language, but it's <laughs> it's a unique experience to write with different letters, if that makes sense. You know, it's not it's not the English alphabet, and I love it. You know, it's absolutely it's been an absolutely amazing you know witchcraft tool to use. But when I misspell things in the, the Theban script, I it drives me crazy and it makes me not want to put that page in uh, because it just messes everything up. Because when I go back to read stuff later, I don't remember what I was thinking at the time. You know, like I don't remember 
you know, what a certain thing was supposed to be. So I have to spell it right the first time I'm going through it. Um, anyway, it's, uh, it's been a real like labor of love and I plan on doing so much in it. Um, I have, uh, this little like, um, notepad thing here. Well, it's not a notepad, it's like a little spiral journal. But I have these notes here that um, list out all the things that I want to um, include in here. Some of these I've already like gotten into, um, like the deity information. Um, I think there's at least one spread for each of the deities. I know Baba Yaga is missing a lot of information. Um, I think the Morgan has the most information in there, um, the most spreads in there as well. But And I really want to flush out Hestia's stuff because uh, she is my matron now. Um, well, I have to do my dedication first and my devotionals and all of that, you know, but um, I have confirmed through divination and... Um, some dreams that I had and it was a real like this past spring equinox um on the 21st the well the 20th was the spring equinox but the 21st was the new moon and that's when I celebrated um but that day was just that was it you know like that cemented it in for me um it had been leading up to that anyway um especially with the dream that I had uh, but it was, I mean, it was so surreal. I mean, she just said, you know, it, you know, Hey, it's time, you know, you know, it's, it's time to, you know, make this a thing. It's time to make this official. It's time to be, uh, an exclusive thing. So she is becoming my matron here soon. And it's very exciting. Um, so I definitely want to flesh out more of her information um, in my grimoire because she will be a huge focus in the times ahead. Um, so yeah, I hope that this has been inspirational. Um, let me know what you want to see and what you want me to talk about. Um, I'll definitely do, you know, like more updates on this and like more walkthroughs going through here and as I, you know, develop larger chunks of the, the grimoire. So, you know, no worries. I will definitely come back and do another one of these. Um, I'm thinking of doing an altar tour next as well. So another tour will be coming up. <sighs> so much to do. Well, I, like I said, I hope this has been inspirational and good luck to you and all of your endeavors. See you in the next one.